Hi, welcome to the Quipster Film Review Podcast. My name is Vince Leo. I am the film critic for the website Quipster.net. I invite you to check out all of my written work there. Quipster.net's where to go. Q-W-I-P-S-T-E-R dot net. Today I'm going to be reviewing a film that's currently on VOD right now. This is one of those movies that I had anticipated seeing. I actually saw the trailer for it while I was watching Maggie's Plan, while I was down in the Los Angeles area, but it never played in my town, despite the fact that my town actually does get a lot of independent films. The movie that I'm talking about is called The Fits. If you are somebody who prefers physical media, it's going to be released on DVD Blu-ray on September 13th, 2016 here. But you can watch it today if you have iTunes or Amazon or other places where you usually catch your VOD releases. The film is not rated, but I probably, I guess I would rate it PG-13 for some thematic elements. It's a drama. It's only an hour and 12 minutes. Very short film. Uh, the cast includes Royalty Hightower, Antonio A.B. Grant Jr., Alexis Neblet, Michaela Burnham, Lauren Gibson, Inea Rogers, and Deshaun Minor. The director and screenwriter is Anna Rolls Holmer. The film centers around a girl named Tony. Tony is a tough but very socially disconnected 11-year-old girl. She lives in the projects in Cincinnati. She's a regular participant and sometimes a helpful assistant in the nearby community center where her older brother, Jermaine, is a boxer. He also trains there as well as cleans up afterward. Tony ends up watching and then deciding to try out to be a member of the Lionesses, which is this highly successful all-girl competitive dance battle squad that practices there in the community center. The girls all regularly work out their highly complicated dance routines, but while Tony is a member of this group, things get a little bit weird because one of the girls ends up falling during the routine in what appears to be some sort of perhaps epileptic fit, hence the title The Fits. Sometime later, another one drops, and then another. Are these girls being overworked? Is there a problem with the environment? Maybe water contamination at the community center? Is it something far worse? These are the questions that the film poses throughout. This film is written and directed by Anna Rose Homer. She's a debut feature filmmaker who created this film as part of this film lab on a very micro-budget level and had to make it all within the course of one full year. There's a very surreal, uneasy feeling to the movie, The Fits, that makes it very interesting, even if the mystery as to what it's ultimately all about is still something that's left to the viewer's interpretation by the end. You'll ask yourself these questions. Is it about the difficulty of a girl becoming a woman? The boys don't seem to be experiencing The Fits. Only some of the older girls seem to be experiencing it. So perhaps is it more specifically about the difficulty of being a black girl in a society that puts so much pressure on them when they begin to fall apart before they can find the strength and that determination to rise out of their state? I guess you could read that into it if you want to as well. Or maybe this is all merely a metaphor for the kind of biological and psychological changes that all girls go through at a time when they're at a certain age perhaps if you want to interpret it that way too, or you can come up completely with your own interpretation as well. These are just some of the things that ran through my mind as I was watching The Fits. There's a very surreal nature to the movie. For instance, Tony has a habit of looking directly into the camera, and by that measure, into us. As we're watching her, we're basically connecting eyes, as if we're her mirror, or perhaps on the other side of a window, looking directly at her. Usually she does these things when it's to spar, or perhaps practice her dance moves, or to do a few reps of exercise. And that all leads to the trance-like state from within this film. I guess it's fitting that the film has this trance-like state, since these girls appear to have go into trances at certain points in the movie, too. So it's just one of the interesting touches of the movie. Another interesting thing is that, with the exception of the dance instructor who is at the community center, there are really is no adult presence within this film, at least not very notable ones. Although Tony and her brother have a home that they go to and come from each day, we never see any of their home life, we don't see their school life, we don't see any of that from any of the other minors in the film. There are no parents to come pick them up. It's just kind of curious that we're so isolated in this bubble. And perhaps that's all part of the themes, too, of isolation and feeling like a separate entity. Meanwhile, Tony appears to be very fascinated by the older girls in the dance troupe and her desire to become more like them, which I think was also a part of the reason why she wanted to join them. This is a very good turn for the non-professional actress with the superstar-like name, Royalty Hightower. 
Hightower joined the acting cast, actually the star of the film, as a member of the real-life Cincinnati-based dance troupe called Q-Kids. They are a YouTube sensation from which the lionesses are made from, and... Anna Rose Homer discovered them while watching YouTube and decided this is what she wanted to make the film about. The Fitz is shot with a very minuscule budget, as I mentioned. It has a very limited selection of shooting locales. However, despite all of that, it's very impressively photographed in that trance-like fashion by Paul Yee. And it does have a memorably eerie, abstract kind of score from Danny Bensey and Sondra Jurians. Much praise really does go to the look, the sound, the casting, the style of the overall film. This is definitely made by people who have a lot of talent here. But despite all of that, there will be some difficulties for some viewers getting a full enjoyment out of this very minimalist film because the film is not very long. It's only 72 minutes. It's an hour and 12 minutes. But yet, even as one of the shorter full-length features that you'll likely see in a movie theater, it does still feel like it's a bit stretched out to meet the requirements of that full feature release. It feels like it probably would have worked better as a 20 or 30 minute film, but yet it's given 72 minutes to kind of explore. It is definitely a much more experimental film than I think most people will be accustomed to who watch mainly mainstream films. So take that into consideration before trying to embark on this. How into experimental films are you? You know, this is not the most experimental film out there. It does make a logical sense if you really want to think about it. You know, it's not that abstract, even though it does have abstract elements to it. And yet, if you expect all of films to make complete sense to you at all times, you're not going to get that here. It definitely is made, as I mentioned, by talented people. This is, at, at the very least, even if very few people see this film outside of film critics like me, or, you know, those people who like to see films that are not mainstream, this is a great calling card for its filmmaker, Anna Rose Homer. She should get bigger and better and more realized projects in the future based on her work here, at least as a director. I think the writing, you know, that's too sketchy to really comment on. It's neither good nor bad. It's just not very fully formed. So it's hard to know if she has a future as a screenwriter yet. So as I mentioned, The Fits is going to be a tough sell for those mainstream audiences because it features a disjointed, very mood-driven narrative. It has very little dialogue. In fact, for a long time, you wonder if they're actually going to have any dialogue at all. Maybe that was a stylistic choice. There are some conversations that do come into play a few minutes into the film. It also raises quite a few questions that don't get answered in any kind of obvious way before the end. It plays m more off of its mood than it does off of its plot. It challenges viewers to try to decipher the strange turns that the film takes, such as the nature of the fits. You know, what's the meaning of Tony hanging out in an empty pool uh, during parts of this film? You know, why such a discordant nature for the score and some of the herky-jerky dance moves? What's the reason why some of the girls seem to be afraid of Tony at times and that others, she seems to be afraid of them? Why do the girls seem to have a case of the fits that seem to be different from one another? And what is a tomboy like Tony's fascination with gaining a much more feminine appearance? You know, maybe that's key into her becoming more of a woman, trying to, you know, painting your fingernails, putting in earrings. Those sorts of things. And what really is her fascination with objects in flight? What does that metaphor mean to her? These are some of the things that Homer is throwing in there. What you really get out of them is going to depend on you. This is an abstract canvas. You're supposed to fill in a full picture of what the artist is trying to do on your own. Now, while this is not the sort of movie I would recommend for many outside of those who regularly feast on art house cinema, for those who are more adventurous about what they choose to watch, I'd say The Fits does make for an effective, rhythmically hypnotic viewing experience unlike many you may have had before, so I'm going to recommend it. With some reservations for people, it's a three-star film on my scale. Three stars out of four. Three stars on my scale means that I think that this is a film that is worth checking out if you're interested in the subject matter. If you want to see films that are based more on mood instead of this really defined plot, if you don't want a film to give you all of the answers as to what it's trying to say, definitely give The Fits a chance. It's, it's competently made. Certainly the people that put it together are very thoughtful about what they're doing. As I mentioned, the only thing that I really could quibble with is the fact that I feel that the movie, while technically short for a feature-length film, should really not have been a feature-length film, at least not without a bolstering more of the characters or maybe gaining a little bit more perspective. 
But given the time constraints and the money constraints, maybe this was the best that Homer could do with those parameters in mind. Three stars out of four for The Fits on iTunes, Amazon, and other places now, September 13th on Physical Media. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you do see The Fits, I hope that you'll reach out and let me know what you think. You can go to my website, quipster.net, for my contact information as well as links to my Twitter feed and Facebook page. All of those are equally acceptable to get in touch with me. I try to respond to everybody who is getting in touch with me. I may not do it here on the show, but definitely you should expect a response if you reach out. If you're somebody who has been listening a while and you want to support the show, the two ways to do that are you can leave a review on iTunes because that definitely will help me greatly find an audience. And also go to patreon.com slash quipster where you can actually make a donation. I pay for all of the films that I see. Anything that you can contribute if you enjoy the show and you want it to keep going is greatly appreciated. But above all else, I do encourage you to check out all of my written reviews. I've been writing film reviews since 1996, and you can read them all, 3,800 plus to choose from, at quipster.net. Q-W-I-P-S-T-E-R dot net.